I'm committed. Are you committed? Mm-hmm. I'm ready to go. I live for you. That's what you want? You want me to live for you? I live for you. That kind of commitment has always been rare. We have yeah. always been rare. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, for real, for real. You know, so it, 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 this, this, this whole thing about, uh, all, you know, everybody's gangster and everybody's a shooter. And a, this is mass insanity, bro. Mass insanity. Ain't no way in the mother world that that particular genetic trait is suddenly everybody got it. We still who we are. Yeah. But we ain't out there with y'all no more. Right. And y'all go respect your big homies. If not, y'all, they go handle it. When you come from this walk of life still, and you come from this banging and you make a name for yourself or you start a, I don't give a f- even if you the next little nigga with the sack and you, it's gonna be a mother that feel like nigga, you, you gotta kick in. Straight up. I don't give a f- if I done put in on it or done with it, nigga, you from over here, so kick in. So sometimes you have to stand your ground about sh- In the 60s, 70s, and the 80s, the, the big homies were totally different than the big homies you had today. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Some of them that grew up in the 60s and 70s, now, you know, them went off to prison or, you know, the crack area this up. Mm-hmm. And we lost mm-hmm. a lot of good big homies, but mm-hmm. back then, like my uncles, they were there to teach the little homies, mm-hmm. the little cats that wanted to hang around them. So in the backyard, they'd show you how to play basketball. They was they was teaching you, if you, if you don't know how to fight, then what, yeah. you go home. How the, how the whole thing just got out of the whack because a lot of the big homies kind of left the little homies out there to defend for themselves. You know what I'm saying? And that's why me at 59 years old, I still keep a relationship with my little homies that represent the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? And they respect me for that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to be over there. You yeah. understand? I got two or three jobs. I know a lot of them gang banging because they saw me doing it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so I feel responsible. Now that I know, I know which way I supposed to, they supposed to really go to be an example. The example I am now, I want them. I want them to grow old like me. I've been dealing with it my whole career. I've been dealing with it my whole career. I ain't gonna say no names, but there was a homie from my neighborhood that was in and out the pen, got a good name. The whole night, everybody respected him. He was best, straight up came out. Was like calling mandatory meetings in my barrio. Like everybody had to pull up, or else my getting checked like he was putting like that structure back in and uh he thought that i was some kind of sucker and i had told him at one point he pulled up to my to my studio session i'm gonna put it out there he put out a tech nine on me you know what i'm saying my own homeboy from my hood and i told him what you gonna do with that you ain't gonna shoot me you know what i'm saying you think i'm supposed to be intimidated i'm from your body homie they call me criminal from silver lake for a reason i mean you think i'm gonna bitch out because you got a strap on me now and he's like oh you gotta do this do that do that i'm gonna I got checked out of my hood. None of my homeboys playing no more. So when you keep it authentic with your people, it doesn't matter how much you try to go against you, your people are going to ride for you. Our big homies, our peers, we were saying New West for anybody that never got an opportunity. A nigga could be 50-something years old. You could have been the ghost riders or the producers, whatever it was behind these other people. We tired of being stepped on and used as X, Y, and Z. And so that's what that rebellion was really about. And it was only targeted at those that was hating on us. You'll get like... You don't represent no more. You don't, you know, you don't do this no more. You ain't, you know, you ain't claiming the hood no more. You know, like, why do you feel some dudes even address that? Man, I, you know, I, I still can't get it to, you know, I, I normally can ration, ration out some things, but this one I just can't ration out. It. One, well, one thing for some of the brothers, so some of the brothers, they ain't never had. They ain't never went nowhere. You dig what I'm saying? The hood is the only thing that they've ever had. You know what I'm saying? So they they have they have this sense that they have a sense of loyalty that is just. I always tell brothers if you if you if you can have this much loyalty towards your own personal endeavors, the same loyalty that you have to this to this hood or to a block where you don't even own a house on the mother. You dig what I'm saying? You would be successful, my brother. You understand what I'm saying? Your priorities is. Up. The brothers I seen early on in the 80s that was crippling in blood and they still had some morals and principles. Right. But when you got G's that are ignorant and on the dark side and changing a code or whatever that it is and they per- perpetuating something that doesn't bring value 
to the the, uh, the lifestyle of cripping and blood, and then you got them going uh, in a circle. They they confused. They're like, "Come on, big homie, I see you doing good, and I see you providing this and this in front of me. But why won't you bring it all the way out across the board?" And it's just like putting the laundry on the table, the, the ins and the outs of how, how to will and deal. How when 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 do I turn this off? The young homies, they only re, they gonna respect their G homies if you still out there and you in the trenches. When they need ride homes, they try to smoke some weed. They need a little drink. They need they hungry. Just get them, a, you know, buy everybody some chili cheese fries. You the big homie, you know. When 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 they get bust on and and, and they gotta go bust back and they. You know, you ain't got to get out there and be like, look, I'm going to go bust with you and everything. But when you regulating everything as a big homie, then they like, that's the big homie. They going to look at everything else like, you know, don't come down from Marino Valley trying to tell me shit. Don't get off work from, from, from the oil refinery trying to tell me nothing. Exactly. But now if you're a respectable G homie like the homie Pork and Smoke saying, they loved you and respected you because you paved the way and they look up to you for that. And they're gonna always hold it in their heart and say, big homie, what you want us to do? Think back to when you was a youngster and the niggas who rode the hardest. The niggas who rode the hardest and the niggas who, them little nerd niggas that would never join the game. Them niggas who would never come around the block. Them niggas, you, you come home at 38 years old and that little nigga got a fine ass wife, beautiful family nigga got, Nice ass cars and shit. Like, you like that punk ass nigga? Like, you like, that nigga been balling. Some of us get to a point where we go, I can't do this shit no more. But then it's some of the homies who are still like, they still there and they still in it and that's all they know. And, you know, you see a lot of dudes, you know, when you see niggas 40 and over. Uh, representing the neighborhood to the fullest. Um, That's a problem. You man. see a lot of dudes question like, why y'all doing that? Why y'all do, come on, you're 40 now, you're 50 now. Um, some of, some, some has the explanation of it's, it's generational. It's like, uh, it's a brotherhood, you know, you don't leave this behind. Um, the only way out is if you die or whatever. Um, you know, they, they, so, you know what I'm saying? Because you see a lot of, especially over here, you see a lot of niggas around our generation and our age that still rep the block. Yeah, they you do. Know? Shit, I know a motherfucker that's 63 years old, man, and, and you know, still, 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 like, you know, pushing the line. I'm like, man, what type of motherfucker is you? When Dre was doing records like Lil Ghetto Boy, I was so happy because he spoke from a perspective that the BGs, all the little homies, always wanted to hear was a, a, a OG take accountability for the bully sh or the destructive sh right. He 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 exactly. uh, inspired yeah. this homie. So when he said, uh, "I'm bigger than you." What you want to do? Didn't know he had yeah, a 22, 22, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I cried like a kid because I actually seen those scenarios and that's when I knew Dre was, you know, this is this is the type of shit that made everyone hug him even that much more. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what was going on. Big homies was getting out of the penitentiary, yes, uh, bullying the little homies in the dice game, yeah, the taking their little sags, doing all this different Man, type of so when the little homies, I'm, I'm I'm here to show you I'm with it. I'm here to say I'm I'm feet funking all day. All day. And this is what you gonna do to me, big homie. Exactly. I ain't trying to fight you, but to fight back and for everybody else not to see you as a punk. Pop, pop, pop. And you over here talking about what I'm doing? Don't write on that wall right there. You know who house that is and all this. Yeah. Little homies be like, man, I knock your head, boy, I blow you away. <laughs> I don't respect you. You ain't my G, homie. We tore up Compton. We, we destroyed it with the drugs and the gang banging. So here I am now, now I got y'all up here. Y'all can tell us that this wasn't supposed to be. Us getting down the way we getting down and the way we killing each other wasn't supposed to be. But let me interject on that and what Melvin is saying about the justice system and our position as OGs or right. older people. If you look in the penitentiary system right now, with Mexicans, 
old Mexicans, they deal with their youth. They tell, man, we don't deal with mayates, we don't do this, we don't do that. But all blacks try to be 20 and try to give misinformation. You feel what I'm saying? They don't give the real. You get some dude 40 or 50 years old talk about gangbanging. 90% of the time, he didn't do shit at 17. Right. He just got out the yeah, house. Got more, about to, got you know, more uh, uh, so, graduation pictures of mugs, y'all. Yeah. That's what we started. Yeah. When we came out with the negativity, the Crips and the Bloods fighting each other, you know, instead of falling behind the Black Panthers and picking up the guns and practicing revolution, we was practicing self-destruction against each other. We didn't have no dialogue or nothing. Everything was always to find a reason not to come together than to find a reason to come together. They just right. felt like, well, damn, if I'm getting this love and he's giving me attention and my dad ain't here or my uncle ain't here, right. I, I want to be here. It's so big. you got a lot of artists who get inspired to say that I'm carpeting the hard rock and, you know, on the wall, but ain't no one giving me enough to value what I'm thinking about. So if if that all, all those pieces not there, I'm just gonna go all the way this way. And then you got a lot of G's that would laugh at that mm -hmm. and think it's entertainment and think it's the shit. But really you up someone who could be special or brilliant or successful to, to life. If you 35 and 45 and 50 you're still out there gang banging, ain't no saving you. This is what you want to do. I believe that what really makes you a man is forgiveness. What really makes you a man is turning another cheek. Because you know what, my brother? It's easy to catch a murder out here. And then when you get stuck up in there, you know what I'm saying? The first thing you're going to say to yourself again, I should have followed my first mind. Look, bro, don't be a fool. It's all right to, to do your thing, claim the hood and bang. But when these murders get to jumping, don't be so quick to kill your people. Because look, I'm going to tell you, you go out there, you catch a murder, they give you 27 to life. And then before you can get five years in, you hear us out here playing in a baseball game. I think what I'm trying to say, though, is uh, it's almost gangster. It's almost real gangster not to be gangster. <laughs>